Good morning. Let's stand together.
There is a blood that costs a life that paid my way with death its price. And when it flowed down from the cross, my sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a blade that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days, he breathed again, and he rose to stand in mighty faith.
There is a grave I try to hide This precious blood That gave me Welcome First North family. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We're excited to share some upcoming opportunities with you. Next weekend marks our highly anticipated Impact Weekend, the pinnacle event of our student ministry. To celebrate in style, we're shaking things up with one special combined service on Sunday at 11 a.m. Bible Fellowship will meet as usual at 10 a.m. Join us for worship featuring student favorite, Justin Warren, plus an inspiring message delivered by Dr. Jay Strack, president and founder of Student Leadership University. It's going to be an amazing Sunday filled with celebration and inspiration as we come together to honor the transformative work of the Lord in the lives of our students. See you there. We would like to invite you to join our Impact Weekend prayer team. As part of the prayer team, you will be praying specifically for our students and leaders involved in Impact Weekend. Prayer team members will receive texts throughout the weekend to remind them to pray specifically for God to move in the lives of everyone involved. Sign up today in Bible Fellowship or with the QR code in today's bulletin. Easter weekend is just two weeks away. We're gearing up for an incredible celebration here at First North. Join us as we rejoice in the hope and renewal of Easter with a lineup of events for the whole family. First, we invite you to join us for our Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Reflect, take communion, pray together, and worship with songs as we honor the sacrifice of our Savior. Then on Saturday, March 30th, from 10 a.m. to noon, bring the kids to our easter Ific egg hunt. Children ages toddlers through fourth grade will be delighted to hunt for eggs with special surprises and treats. Enjoy games, cookie decorating, and even a petting zoo. Finally, on Easter Sunday, gather with us for an uplifting service at 9 and 11 a.m. Together, let's celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with songs of praise, a message of hope, and hearts full of gratitude. Make plans now to celebrate Easter with us here at First North. You can find more information about all of these opportunities as well as additional information about our church family on our website at firstnorth.org. Well, we're delighted that uh, <clears throat> you are here this morning with us. And uh, if you're a guest, we're so glad you're here. In fact, uh, we have a, a new card. Well, it's the same card, but you'll see a little card in front of you in the pew rack, and you can uh, hit that QR code there, and it'll take you to our website. Or on the back, you can just fill out a little information there. We'd love to have a record of your visit with us today. We're so glad that uh, you're here. In 1983, it was September the 1st, 1983, we had one of the worst air disasters in history. Uh, Korean Flight 
007 took off from New York and uh, was on its way to Seoul, Korea uh, by way of Anchorage. Stopped in Anchorage to be uh, refueled and then took off there headed for Seoul. But the, the uh, crew made a small mistake. So small that probably when the, when the plane, which was a 747, took off, it was about, and I've, I've studied this, they, uh, it was about maybe a couple of hundred feet to the right of its flight plan. And for some reason, they never adjusted. And so over the next several hours, that several hundred feet became a couple of hundred miles. And all of a sudden, this 747 it was flying towards Seoul, was off course by, as I said, two or three hundred miles, and entered Russian airspace. It was a time of the Cold War, and relationships weren't good between the United States and, and, uh, and Russia. And they thought it was a spy plane, or at least that's what they said. They didn't even admit this for several years. But they shot that airliner down. They said it was a mistake, and until, until the Soviet Union collapsed, no one knew the truth. We never even saw uh, much of the information until after that. 269 passengers and crew lost their lives as those Russian freighters shot down that airliner, thinking that it was a spy plane uh, that was made to look like an airliner. All of those people lost their lives because they made a mistake, a very, very small mistake that started out literally with just being a few feet off course. But as they kept going in the same direction, as they kept going in the same direction, they got further and further and further off course. As I read that story and kind of went through the information, and much of it I did not understand, I thought about how that in our lives, many times, we get in situations that happen just like that. We start off and we just, we just get off track a step or two in our vocation, in our thought life, in our uh, marriage, in our priorities our families, our personal habits. And we get off and we just say, well, it's not too bad. It's, it's okay. We're flying along here, don't know the difference. And all of a sudden, you're in dangerous territory. And the result is that you can lose your life. As followers of Jesus Christ, God gives us clear direction. We're in a series of messages now on the Sermon on the Mount, which was the greatest sermon ever preached. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And in Matthew chapter 5 there, we have just gone through the Beatitudes. And, and what there are two things here that are critical, and I put these in your outline, is that, that, that as we're going to talk about salt and light today, when you talk about salt, salt emphasizes, is looking back at these Beatitudes and emphasizes what a Christian is. Jesus has given, a pic, given us a picture of the character of a follower of Christ. This is what we are supposed to look like. And he gives us those eight Beatitudes that are saying to us the way that we ought to live. The result of that is that we become the light of the world when we become followers of Jesus Christ. When we become followers of Christ, then the light emphasizes what a Christian does. Salt talks about what a Christian is. Light talks about what a Christian does on a daily basis. There are some commentators that believe that at this point in the sermon that, that Jesus might have pulled together some of his closest followers rather than speaking to all of the crowd, and that when he talked to them about being salt and light— he was talking to those who were his most dedicated followers, those that he expected to be his disciples. And so when he looks at them, and here's what the Scripture says, 
He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, you're, let your light shine before others, so that you may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I want you this morning to think of us as a small group that we've pulled aside. We've come out of the world for the moment. There's a whole mess of stuff going on in our world. My goodness, we, we hear bad news every single day. There's no question about that. We, we see the, the terrible things that are happening uh, around the world, the conflicts. We see the, the incredible problem that we're facing uh, in our country with uh, illegal immigration. And not just uh, illegal immigrants, but those that are bringing the worst of the worst are just walking into our country. What are we to do? Where are we to stand? Uh, everybody's got an opinion. And, but just for a moment, let's kind of walk off to the side here. And as Jesus speaks to us about what it means to be salt and light, and it gets down to the point of what is, what is your responsibility? You. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about us as a, a nation or us as a state or a community or even as a church. What's your responsibility? What is it that you need to be doing? What is it that you have the capability to do because you're a follower of Christ? This is the difference that being a follower of Christ makes in every life. And he gives you and gives me the chance to make a difference in the world in which we live. Starting with the very smallest things. Focusing on staying on course in our lives. Following the path that God has set before us. Won't you pray with me? Father, as we come before you today, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to understand and see what you have for us. God, not only do we want to understand that theologically, we want to understand it practically. We want you to show us what we can do, what we should do. Lord, use these examples today so that we can not just wish we could make a difference or wish that somebody would do something, but that, Father, we would commit in our hearts and lives to be that person that makes a difference. And we commit this time to you. Thank you, dear Lord, for being in our presence. Give us special attention now, we pray. I pray you would speak. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You just saw our announcement video, and Maddie did. And I want to mention to you, because there, there are no better examples than this, you have an opportunity, I have an opportunity, just in these next few weeks to make a, to make a huge difference in the lives of, of people, to do things that, that God wants us to do, us to do uh, that, that God wants us to be. Uh, next week we have our uh, Impact Weekend. This is a very big, big event. For those of you that are not familiar, it's a very big event in the life of our church. We'll have a, just a, a large number of teenagers from all across our area. I was told just this past week, they, we've got some uh, teenagers that are going to be in the midst of this weekend that have literally never been in a church in their life, ever. And so we're going to have that weekend. We'll be having sessions of music and fellowship and fun and games. There, our speaker next week will be Jay Strack. Many of you know Jay. Jay is a a longtime friend of mine. In fact, I would say that um, in the people that I know, I, I'd say Jay Strack has been one of, at least in the top five minds that I ask that I've ever, that I've ever known. Uh, next week, as a culmination of Impact Weekend, we're going to have one service on Sunday morning. Uh, we've got all of those kids and they're 
they're, they're going in every direction. And so we'll have our regular Bible study at 10 o'clock. And we're asking you, our 9 o'clock service, to join us at 11. I, I want that because, first of all, I, I want you to hear him. We could do that service. But I want you to see what happens there. I want you to see what takes place. So I know that's a little bit of a different change in your schedule. But uh, our Bible study will meet at 10. And then our worship service will be at 11. Uh, Jay has a message. I talked to him about it this week. About the, uh, about the future, about how the world seeks to steal your future. And that's what's true for you and what's true for me. Uh, Jay uh, leads Student Leadership University, which I think is the finest youth training event in America. There is no conference for young people that get, puts them more on the cutting edge and gives them more information than Student, Life, uh, student Leadership University. And so this is great. Not only that, but, but Jay is very attuned to what is happening culturally here and around the world. Has traveled literally all over the world. Um, has a great perspective. This is a Sunday you do not want to miss. You don't want to miss it for several reasons. One, you want to be here to encourage those kids. Secondly, you want to be here because it should be a product of your prayers. You heard Maddie mention that we're praying. We're taking those kids. If you've not signed up for that today, you should do that today. You will have the name of a young person that you're committed to pray for during that weekend. You may not know them, uh, you, but, but you are to pray for them. Lift them up. We've done that before. This is a crucial part of the weekend. It is not just the speaker, not just the music, not just the food. It is the prayers of God's people for these kids who face the greatest challenges, greatest number of challenges in the history of our country as teenagers. We cannot, we cannot miss this opportunity. We don't have, we don't bring anybody in to pray, and we don't bring anybody in to care. I mean, obviously they care and they pray, but you are a very important part of that, that you bow your head and say, Lord God, put your hand on this young person. Put your hand on this young lady. Be with this family. We don't know the circumstances from which they come in many cases, but this is oh so very um, important. You're going to enjoy the service. Uh, it's going to be a time when the church comes together. We do that several times a year. So please, please make that a priority. Sign up a prayer. Don't assume that somebody else is going to do it. Folks, let me tell you what I want. I want every one of those kids to have more than one person praying for them. I want them to have multiple people praying for them, and we need your help in doing that. The week after that, of course, is Easter. And, and what, a, what a time this is for us. Easter is the holiday that is where, where studies have shown that they, people are most susceptible, even more than Christmas, because Christmas they're so distracted by other things. But Easter is where they are liable to come to a church service. Our Good Friday service is going to be a magnificent time of worship and praise where we focus, we focus on the cross. Uh, Saturday morning, our Easter egg hunt there for the, for the kids. Once again, we're just find, trying to find ways to touch families. And then our Easter services on Sunday. As you go out today, let me tell you, you, you'll see at all of our doors, you'll see these little cards here. We printed these just for you to have. You're our best source of information. I want you to take a couple of these packets. I want you to take them with you. I want you to give them out wherever you go. Say, listen, what are you going to do about Easter? Don't assume they're going to be someplace. What are you going to do with these? I'd love for you to be with us. In fact, here's this little card. This little card tells them about the Easter egg hunt, tells them about the Good Friday service, tells them about our Easter services. It's just a reminder. Why don't you come? Why don't you meet me there? Why don't you be a part of that day with us? It's going to be a great Easter for us. We've got a couple thousand of these out that we want to, you to get out. That's your tool. You need to put this in your pocket. I'll tell you, I've already tried it out a couple times. With people that I'm just, I'm, I'm in a restaurant, in a store, and I'd say, hey, listen, I want you to know, here's what we're doing Easter. We'd love to have you come and, and join us. And they're, they're, they're appreciative of the invite. They may or may not be there, but I, for sure, folks, they're not going to be there if they're not invited. This is an opportunity we have. You see, these are things, these are things that we have an opportunity to do. You have an opportunity to do this. 
You and I have an, we have a responsibility to do this. No one else can, can take your place. We're a part of that crew. Oh, we must not make the mistake. We must not make the mistake of letting people continue to get off course in their lives. This little card could be a major correction. Your caring, your prayers can be a major correction here. That's what the Lord Jesus is talking to his disciples about today. When he says, pulls them aside and says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you, he says it to you, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And you have a responsibility and you have an opportunity that goes far beyond that. And he uses these two illustrations for very specific reasons. Salt was very important. Remember, they didn't have a lot of ice in that time. They didn't have any at all. And, and salt was important in a number of ways. And I put these in your outline. Salt was a, a symbol of purity. It was, a, it was a substance that would permeate. It would permeate uh, food. And it would be, a, as we're going to see in a moment, a, a preservation of that. But that salt was, had that purity about it. That's what we're to be. We're to be different. When we walk out of the church of Jesus Christ, people should see here in our conversation, see it in our actions, that we are different. There's something that's not quite the same. Not weird, not crazy, just different. That we should be different. People should be able to to tell. They should be able to see that. I had someone recently that was saying to me, telling me about an instance there where they had, where they had a conversation with someone, and, and they, they weren't very close, good friends with them, but not, not extremely close. And all of a sudden, the person says to him, says, you know, I, I can share this with you as a brother in Christ. And, and he didn't even know that she knew that he was a Christian. And I said to him, let me tell you something. You're sharing with this person that you're a Christian and you don't even know it. It's the way that you talk. It's the way that you act. It's the perspective that you have. And they see it in your life. That's what happens. You may not even have the, have the uh, real plan before you, but they see it because you're the salt of the earth. The salt gives flavor. We know that. Most of us. Most of us use too much salt in our food. That's where it kind of breaks down a little bit, bit spiritually because it gives great flavor. It, it cleanses. It, it purifies in that. It is, a, um, it is a cleansing agent. It develops. There's one thing that some commentators said. It develops a thirst. You get, you get it's too much salt, you're going to be thirsty. And there is a thirst there. The salt in culture creates a thirst, a thirst for the things of God. I want to know more about what that, what does that Jesus mean to you? What does it mean for you to be a Christian? How do you handle those problems in your life? What happens in your family? What happens in your work? And we become an agent of, of cleansing and it creates a thirst in the lives of people. And lastly, it preserves. They use salt to preserve to, to, for that meat for that food to preserve that so that it would last longer, which was a major challenge in its culture. And so that, that salt is a very mechanical substance that is used to help people survive. But then he goes on and he says, not only are you the salt of the earth, he says, you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gets light to all in the house. Light is meant to be seen. And you say, boy, boy, Dick Tracy, man, Pastor, you're so smart there. Hey, that's the truth. You can't, you can't do anything without that light. It's meant to be seen. It draws attention to you. It, it, it draws attention to you. It, it gets your attention every single time. Um, we have a thing in our house that's driving me crazy. And um, my, uh, my, my mother-in-law used to, uh, uh, she 
was amazing for, for finding gadgets. She'd have every kind of gadget you possibly have. So I found these two. They were lights there. And I'd, I didn't know what they were, little, little lamps that were there. I couldn't even find an on switch on them. I didn't know what they were. And then I figured out they're lights that you sit around, and they're there in your house in the darkness. They're in the darkness. And if you walk in front of them, they'll come on. They scare me to death about four or five times a night. I mean, that, that's, that's, what, that's what they do. And so when, when you come in there, you walk into a dark room. Walk in a dark room. They're, they're meant to be night lights. I think they're meant to be night lights for drug addicts or something. It just <laughs> plays a psychedelic thing in your mind. I don't know. But anyway, you walk in this dark room, and all of a sudden, ding! You've got this you got this spotlight on you. You can see everything. That's what light's supposed to do. Light does what it's supposed to. It lights it up. Light is made to be seen. People should see in your life and my life in very small ways the things that you say, the things that you do, the service that you have for others, the care that you have for others. They see the light of the Lord Jesus. So it is meant to be seen. It drives out the darkness. Folks, all we hear about is darkness. As I mentioned a moment ago, we don't have a lot of good news, you know. The, the news is always going to lead with the greatest crisis. Never the good news. Everything that's bad. We've caught this person lying. We've had this crime. We've had another person killed. We have this international incident. It goes on and on. But light the light of the Lord Jesus, that God loves you, that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sin. It lights it up and drives out the darkness. It doesn't matter what happens out there and what's going to take place. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. We become the light of the world so that people can see the truth. And most of all, that light is a guide for your path. It's a guide for your path, and it's a guide for the path of others as well. You show them the way. When you're the light of the world, you give them a picture of light, you drive out the darkness, and they are able to do what God would have them to do. That's the only way that they have hope in their life. They don't have any hope. They don't have any chance unless they see the light of the Lord Jesus. Listen, folks, everybody ha is uh, trying to tell us about solutions, uh, a philosophic solution, a, uh, a uh, psychological solution, uh, an economic solution, a, an educational solution. Everybody's trying to show us the way, but it's the light that makes the difference. That's what happens in our lives. The light makes all the difference. Now, what is the result? What's the result of us being salt and light? And let me tell you, you get to decide, all right? It's all about what you do with Jesus. The purpose of the Lord Jesus here was to say to his disciples, we want your tribe to increase. You have this opportunity. My friend, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, God gives you a chance because he loves you so much. Because he's given you abilities and gifts and strengths, and he wants to use them, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. That's what he wants with you. You're here today, and you're a follower of Christ. You're a believer. You know him as Savior and Lord. Listen, God's not through with you yet. In fact, he has barely started. He gives you an opportunity. He gives you an opportunity to make a difference in the life of that kid that you pray for. He makes a difference in your life when he gives you the opportunity to speak into their lives, to love them, to pray for them, to encourage them, to do what only you can do. God gives you that opportunity. I'm telling you, folks, let me tell you, God's giving you that opportunity all the time. It's there all the time. You'd just be amazed the opportunities that God will give you if you just look for that. And what happens is this. He says there in verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What are your good works? 
said, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a lot of talents, and I'm not sure what to do about this or that. I don't know what to do. But God uses that in a great and wonderful way. I'm going to give you an illustration right here, and I've put this here in the middle. Um, I want to see what Impact Weekend does. Megan Harry is a young lady who grew up in our church, and she is serving now in the Middle East in a very strategic place with our International Mission Board. And she is uh, on a, um, uh, she's in a, in a mission program doing it there and having a tremendous time doing that, but in a very difficult spot in the world. And she was here recently, and, uh, and so we had her we had her speak to us. I want you to hear a word from her because you're a part of this. If you is these, we've got other kids that are going to be like Megan. We've got other kids that will be called to the mission field. We've got we've got those that are going to be touched by this ministry. Here is where uh, here is where it ultimately shows up. But in fact, weekend is where it starts. I want you to see that illustration. So show us that video uh, right now, Barry. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Harry and I'm serving with the International Mission Board in North Africa, teaching English. I grew up going to First North and in these years the Lord called me to pursue international ministry at a Global Impact Conference. The leaders in the youth and other leaders in the church uh, encouraged and supported me in this call by prompting me to pray about this daily to discern what next steps the Lord would have me take. I remember Impact Weekend, I was always prayerfully asking the Lord to speak to me, and He always did because I was waiting and I was listening to Him. It was always my prayer that I would take what He showed me that weekend into the rest of my year. The next step He had me take to pursuing my call was taking short-term trips with the church. And this is where he really grew my desire to share the gospel with internationals. A way that you can be praying for my people group is this month in particular, they're celebrating a holiday called Ramadan. They consider this month to be the holiest month of the year where they are fasting and praying and doing all of these things to have dreams and visions of God telling them that they will be in heaven someday. This is their hope the thing that they are trying to work for. So what we can be praying for them is that God will speak to them during this month because they are waiting. They are waiting for him. But we can be praying that the one true God would speak to them and reveal the one way of salvation is through his son, Jesus Christ. You get to be a part of what's happening there. And for a lot of you, you can't even find it on the map. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't find it if we gave you a globe. But you get to be a part of it. Every person part of it. So you heard her talk about Impact Weekend. And as, as God began to put that in her, in, her, uh, in her life. And you need to pray for the Harrys in our church because that's a blessing for them to see that. And, uh, and difficult is their daughters. They're serving around the around the world but we get to be a part of that opportunity that's what you get to be a part of as a part of the church of jesus christ and so what we see there is that our good deeds are seen for god's glory for god's glory it's not important who's doing what and where what's important is what is being done what is being done for the glory of God? Because our good deeds are seen for God's glory. It's not so that you can wear medals or that you can be praised or you can be lifted up, but so that God might be glorified. And they draw attention to that which is important. That's what you do. I mean, and by the way, this is not about where, what, that you need to memorize the Gospel of Luke in the Greek or something that you need to become an, est an expert in systematic theology, or you need to travel around the world. Maybe that's what God has for you. But you just become and you be what God would have you to be, and that is to be salt and to be light and to make that difference. And what it does is it changes things. It affects our witness all the time. From the time you walk out of here, it impacts your witness. It impacts your values you're there to say what is important, and it impacts your priorities. You see, when we're salt and light, the world is trying to pull us off track. 
Every single time, every one of us, the, the devil tries to distract us and put us in another direction. We need to keep our witness, our values, our priorities right on the line of what God would have us to be, that we are to be salt and light. That's the opportunity that God gives to us. We have those opportunities. I say, well, I'll think about that sometime. It's yours, and it's your opportunity right now. John, with this we pray. Lord, as we come before you today, Father, I pray that you take all of these things that are very organizational. (coughs) A lot of stuff has to be done. Rooms have to be set up and programs have to be printed and, and uh, phone calls need to be made and emails sent and, and contacts made and uh, so much technically needs to be prepared and lighting systems and sound systems and, and Lord, you need to prepare leaders that are going to be leading these students in this group. Justin as his group as they lead music and Jay as he preaches and, and Lord, we as we pray Lord, we pray that we'd step up and be what you would have us to be. God, I pray that this might show us as we look toward Easter, there are opportunities for us to invite, to share, to pray for those who need this so desperately. God, we pray that we might be, as it talks about here, that we might be salt and we might be light, that we'll be there to make a difference and realize that just as we see in the life of man, that All of this is connected for us. And so we pray that you would give us the strength to do that. I pray for those that need to give their heart and life to Christ today. Those that need to come in the life of the church, we open the doors of this church. We, Lord, for those who are, are, you have put upon them a burden on the left. These prayer rails are open to come and say, oh God, help me to do what I should do. For those that need to rededicate their life, Lord, take us where we are. And then take us to where you want us to be. And we'll give you honor and glory. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing. And this little song says, come just as you are. That's what the Lord does. The Lord doesn't tell you. A lot of people go to seminary. You don't have to go to seminary. A lot of people want to read these books. They're all fine to do. But God says to us, he takes us. Thank God he takes us right where we are and makes us into what we can be. Would you say yes to him today? I'll be here, other ministers will be here. Would you make that commitment to him? As we stand and as we sing together, would you say say yes to him today? Come just as you The Lord is doing something in your life. Don't leave here today without speaking to one of us. We'll be here right after the service. This is a time filled with opportunity. As you go out, pick up the little cards here. Take them with you. You can't use them if you don't have them. Okay? Grab some of those. Sign up today either in Bible Fellowship or there's a place in the foyer for you to sign up. Be that prayer warrior for those kids. Well, I tell you, I don't want to walk away and say, why, I could have done something else, and it might have made a difference. We need to do the very best that we can do. One other word before we leave, some of you saw it in the email I sent this week. Doug and Lou Lynn Turner have served us many years. Doug, for 24 plus years, our children's director. Lou Lynn's worked in our preschool. 
uh, they thought about this, prayed about this. We've, we've talked a lot and, and, uh, about this, and they are planning on retiring from those ministries. Lou Lynn's going to stay involved with our school, but they feel this is the right time for them. They're not going anywhere. They, that, they don't have any other plans in this. They just think this is what they should do right now. They've been such a great asset. Um, they, they've made multi-generational impact on our church. So I want you to pray for them. Uh, just You'll be seeing more of this uh, because of Easter and all these things. We'll uh, put on your calendar um, April 14th because that's Sunday where we're going to recognize them in both services. Their families will be here. You'll, you'll be seeing them. Uh, they'll be working through Easter uh, in doing this. But uh, we're, in, we're in very good shape of people that are doing it. We have great children's preschool workers. So uh, just pray the next step that God has for us. But pray for them because they've been such an important part of our family. And uh, I think most of you got that in the email. If you have questions, you can uh, call us about that. But um, we're just excited of what God has for them next because they believe this is what the Lord would have them do. Hope you'll go to Bible Fellowship today. There's a place for you if you don't know where that is. You can ask somebody in the foyer there, and they'll be glad to share with you. Let's pray before we go. Father, we are in a time where there is a lot of stuff to do. Great opportunities that are all connected to one another. I pray, Lord, right now for that impact weekend. I pray that we'd come by the hundreds and just say, we want to be prayer warriors for these kids. Pray for Jay as he prepares. I pray for Justin as he prepares. I, I pray for Ben and Amy, Lord, as they've been working day and night on this. For Stephanie, as they, the, our, our, all of our youth leaders have been working on this literally for months. God, we pray that you'll bring great fruits and a harvest in this time. And we're going to give you the honor and the glory. And thank you, dear Lord, for letting us be a part of it. We look to Easter with a great anticipation of what you're going to do in our midst. And Lord, for all of those in our preschool children's ministry, in our, our music ministry, our worship ministry, the, our Bible fellowship teachers, as we come toward this Easter time, that Lord, you'd use every bit of it for your honor and glory, that people might see that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Bless us this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.